Welcome to the Abrams Boxing Show, powered by Last Out Media and brought to you by www.15rounds.com, the worldwide leader in boxing news. Also, Abrams Boxing PR Media Broadcasting, the industry standard for boxing media relations and play-by-play broadcasting. Also, check out www.abramsboxing.com, Abrams Boxing on YouTube, as well as M. Abrams Boxing on Twitter and Mark Abrams Boxing on Instagram. Welcome to another edition of the Abrams Boxing Show. I'm Mark Abrams. I'm coming to you from the Embassy Suites, Miami International Airport, where uh, I taped this on uh, the Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, this Saturday night. We'll get into it in a little bit. I'll be broadcasting by the WBC Cruiserweight World Title Fight between Noel McCallion taking on Ilanga Jr. Makabu uh, again for the WBC Cruiserweight Championship. That'll be live on fight.tv, donking.com. Uh, we'll get into the whole card shortly. Uh, here are the sounds behind us. We're going to be uh, doing our press conference uh, very shortly. Uh, doing all the mic checks and and whatnot for that. Um, So let's uh, get right down to it. This past Saturday in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Tyson Fury, uh, took on the MMA uh, heavyweight champion, Francis Ngannou, in what was Ngannou's first professional boxing match. On paper, it looked like a mismatch, you know, based on some of the uh, MMA versus boxing fights of recent memory. The boxer has won just about, if not all the fights, in very handily handed fa- uh, fashion. Saturday night was a little bit different as Francis Ngannou did not win the fight, came up just a little bit short as Fury took the split decision by scores of 96, 93, 95, 94. One judge had it 95, 94 for Ngannou, but Tyson Fury, uh, Got all he could uh, could have wanted on Saturday in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, as Ngannou dropped Fury with a left hook to the top of the head in round three. Fury started to do well rounds four, five, six, and then in round eight again, Ngannou uh, rocked Fury again. And uh, I don't know if it was so much that Fury was not in shape. He didn't, he didn't uh, you know... Um, take Nganu seriously. He was looking ahead to a potential December 23rd fight with uh, Alexander Usyk, who was one of the many, many world champions and big-time celebrities that were ranked. So I got Eminem there and and uh, Slim Shady. Who, uh, Slim Shady is Eminem. And uh, Kanye West and uh, Ronaldo and all kinds of uh, – uh, professional athletes and actors and singers from around the world, and, and then uh, about 50 former and current world champions were in the house as well in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. So uh, Tyson Fury skirts by by the uh, skin of his ample belly on Saturday, uh, for lack of a better term. And that uh, uh, kind of pushed back because ESPN uh, was going to – They, I, said, I think throughout the broadcast, I, I – didn't watch the whole broadcast that the December 30, uh, December 23rd fight was in, uh, was basically set in stone with him and Usyk. And now, uh, that's going to be expected to be pushed back into February as Fury's going to need a little time to recover both physically and probably more so mentally uh, after what happened Saturday against Francis Ngannou. Now, and now Ngannou's being uh, mentioned to fight you know, guys like Anthony Joshua, Deontay Water, heavyweights, uh, all the big heavyweights uh, that could uh, – you know, for him to make that type of money, made ten, ten allegedly ten million dollars on Saturday. Fury supposedly got about fifty uh, for his uh, for, for his troubles. I mean, on Saturdays, but uh, you know, uh, you see all this stuff on the the, the uh, media platform formerly known as Twitter. That uh, I guess it's called X now. That he embarrassed boxing. Boxing took a big hit on Saturday. I mean, boxing's always going to be here. And, you know, uh, there's always going to be great fights. And uh, Saturday notwithstanding, you know, we'll we'll see if this is the beginning of a Tyson Fury slide or was it just a, you know, everything had to work out perfectly for Francis Ngannou to be competitive. Tyson uh, Fury had to overlook him. He wasn't in shape. And Ganu had to put his, you know, best performance possible. Maybe it just all uh, happened in one uh, one ball of lightning. And uh, Francis and Ganu got, got close. I know all the MMA guys, Ariel Hawani, it's basically like I don't know, 
crying, shrieking, gloating. His voice, it was unbelievable. You you check out his show. I just gave his show a free plug. But anyway, um, the uh, Tyson Fury gets by with the victory. Goes to 34-0-1. Francis Ngannou now 0-1. Saturday in in Cancun, Mexico, the WBC Super Featherweight Champion Oshaki Foster went to 21 and 2, notched his 11th knockout as he scored a thrilling come from behind last round stoppage over Eduardo Rocky Hernandez in about that uh, headline on the zone. They had the open scoring, and uh, Foster was behind in, in on the uh, cards. He came back, hurt Hernandez, dropped him. Uh, Twice in the 12th and final round, this fight was stopped 22 seconds before the end uh, for Oshaki Foster. In a bout that was uh, upgraded to a WBO interim junior flyweight contest, Rene Santiago went to 13-3 and with 10 knockouts as he also scored a 12th round stoppage, but I think he was ahead on the card, over previously undefeated Kevin Vivas. Vivas now 7-1. That uh, fight took place at the Alexis Arguello Arena in Managua, Nicaragua. Fight uh, was stopped at 118. It was a Santiago shot to the body that ended things. That fight was seen live on ESPN+. Plus. This week got some good action going on. Saturday uh, afternoon in Monte Carlo, the uh, the zone uh, kicks off uh, the action with the IBF super featherweight world title fight between Joe Cordina, 16 and 0 knockouts and Edwin Vasquez, 15 and 1, three knockouts. We've had Vasquez on the program a couple of times already. That will take place at the famous casino de Monte Carlo in Monaco. Saturday night on ESPN plus Heavyweight F.A. Ajagba, 18 and 1, 13 knockouts, takes on Joseph Goodall. Goodall now 10, 1 and 1 with nine knockouts. That will take place at the Tahoe Blue Event Center in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. Uh, Ajagba, as we know, he's been, been a staple on TV for the past several years. Goodall coming off a upset win over Stephen Shaw uh, a couple months back, so he gets the fight with Ajagba. This uh, will be the first boxing event at the new venue that opened up uh, you know, earlier in October. Uh, the ten-round co-feature will uh, pit lightweight Raymond Muratala, 18 and 0, 15 knockouts, and Diego Torres, 18 and 0, 17 knockouts. Also, uh, heavyweights Brandon Moore will make his top-ranked debut, and Antonio Morales, 8 and 0, 7 knockouts, will see action in separate fights. Just uh, just across the street from where I'm sitting this Saturday night, Don King Productions puts on a championship pay-per-view on Fight.tv and DonKing.com. The main event will feature Noel McCallion, 26 and 2, 11 knockouts, takes on former world champion Alanga Junior Macabo, uh, 29 and 3, 25 knockouts. That'll be for the vacant WBC Cruiserweight title at the Casino Miami High Live, again right across the street in Miami. Um, McCallion, uh, who's uh, look, looking to win a world title for the first time, very confident young man. And uh, I, earlier this week, I had a chance to speak to Noel McCallion, and this out went. Now joining me on the line is the number one ranked WBC cruiserweight in the world, and this coming Saturday night makes his first attempt at a world title. Noel McCallion taking on Ilanga Makabu live on Fight TV pay-per-view from Miami. We're just about a week away. Noel, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm great. I'm doing good. Training uh, last week, recovering, and I'm ready to go. I know this has been a long time coming. You've been sitting as, as the number one contender for a long time. Uh, what's been going through your mind as you waited for this title shot that, you know, you've been the number one contender for for uh, well over a year now? Yeah, it's been a long time and actually the second attempt after the British fight. So I was like building up after four years now, rebuilding my career kind of and two years COVID. And it was, it was a long road to get to this fight. And I'm, I'm happy and glad and excited that it's finally happening. Like you said, you've been in these type of fights before. You fought uh, former world champion Christoph Ladarczyk, Marius Breedis. How have the, even those fights, they, they didn't go your way. How has that prepared you for, for, for this Saturday night and Alanga Makabu? I, I, I think you're in a bad no cell area. You're in a, you're in a bad cell area. You're breaking up. Uh. 
Hello? Okay, uh, we're, we're back. Okay, yeah, you're in a bad sell area. We didn't hear your answer. I asked you how those two oh. big fights with Breedis and, and Vladarczyk, how has that prepared you for, for, for the fight with Maccabi on Saturday night? Well, I'm very well prepared. I I'm, I feel confident. I feel undefeated because uh, I, those fights were only on paper, not mine, but inside the ring they were mine. So I feel well prepared. I feel confident. I feel I feel great, excited. This uh, opportunity uh, it, it comes. Um, talk about Makabu. Obviously, he was a longtime champion. You know, did not fight very well against Badu Jack. What, what what do you think of him as a fighter? Well, he is. I respect him as a fighter. He is. He is. He's good. His re, he has a good record. A strong puncher, uh, southpaw. He beat great, uh, good cruiserweights. Uh, I respect his achievements, but I think I'm just a better boxer. And against Badu Jack, yeah, that was surprisingly. I, I thought he picked the fight instead of me because he was supposed to fight me in January, but he picked uh, Badu Jack because he thought it would be an easy fight and good money, and then surprisingly lost. And yeah. Now, uh, he had a, he had a rematch clause against him, and that's why he has, he can't fight now against me because I'm the mandatory. So we will see on Saturday. Do you feel you know like, you know maybe uh, you're you're very well experienced now? You you uh, ha- had some of these big fights internationally. You think you're catching Makabu at the right time? He's come out. Forget about come off a loss. He he got his butt kicked in that fight. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I I'll say that. I know you're not going to say that. I will say that. You feel yeah. he's a guy, he's he's a little bit older, maybe he's lost a step or two? Uh, well, I don't know. I, I don't want to underestimate him. That's why I'm pre- I prepared myself very well to be prepared for any uh, circumstance. So I think he will bring his A game because he wants to be champion again. And uh, I want to be champion for the first time. So I'm prepared for his A game. So I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm scared to underestimate him. How cool is it for you? I know you've been living in Miami now for several years. You're going to have the fight, you know, literally, uh, you know, miles from where from where you live. True. That's that, that's awesome. I, I'm very happy. I have a lot of friends in Miami and a lot of supporters. Miami has been great for me the last four years. And many people helped me, believed in me, and uh, it's kind of like a homecoming. So I feel very, very confident and uh, very happy that it's happening in Miami. Yeah, I, so I assume you're going to have a lot, good, lot of people cheering for you. Yes, it would be nice. <laughs> gonna be a, gonna be a great fight. It won't keep uh, too much of your time. I know we're you're uh, the last uh, week of uh, the training and everything. And uh, True. what um what do, what do you want to say to the fans out there before we see you uh, this Saturday night live uh, Casino Miami live fight TV pay per view? I would imagine you know we you will probably have a lot of like you mentioned you have a lot of fans and friends coming to the fight, but. Obviously, with family from Armenia, you spent a lot of time in Germany. I would imagine you'll have you'll have people watching all over the world uh, rooting you in to try to win this world title. Yes, uh, I I think I deserved it, and I will uh, do the best to uh, that my hand gets raised at the end. I'm very happy. Everybody who who is coming or tuning in, I'm like very grateful for every support. And yeah, buy the pay per view. Come uh, see me if you can't come. Uh, tune in on Fight TV on DonKing.com and uh, on any other streaming service. And if you're in Miami or in Florida, come to the fight. It's going to be a great show. Don King, 92-year-old celebration and WBC Cruiserweight World Title fight. So let's get it. So maybe, maybe you'll give Don a big birthday gift uh, with, with a great effort on Saturday. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Noel, we thank you for a few minutes of your time. Uh, we will oh, see you, you this we will see you this week. I'll be down there Tuesday, and uh, I'll be I'll be calling the fight. And uh, I look forward to getting together with you, speaking to you in person. And uh, we'll see you Saturday night. I see you Saturday night. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank having you. Me. Thank you. And there you have it, Noel McCallion. Uh, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. He, you know, he wins the fight Saturday night against the former champion, Big Punchy Makabu, who's coming off the loss to Badu Jack. McKaylee's been waiting about a year and a half now for, for this. He's been ranked number one for quite a while. So we will see uh, a good fight on Saturday night. I've been watching a lot of film on McKaylee. People haven't seen him. He can fight. He's got a... He's got some ability. He, it's funny. He only has like 11 knockouts in about 27, 28 fights. But he can punch. Like I said, I, I, he he gave Myris Breedis all he could handle. A fight that 
he very well could have won that fight. And he lost, and I didn't see the fight with Vladarczyk, the former world champion in Poland. But when you lose a split decision in Poland to Christoph Vladarczyk, that means you, you probably won the fight. As Steve Cunningham, that he, you know, well, we've been we've been down that road before. So uh, this is a guy who believes he's undefeated, and uh, it's gonna be a heck of a fight. Makabu, like I said, is a longtime champion. Didn't fight particularly well against Badu Jack, but the last thing they go to uh, they they say is the punch. And Makabu certainly is a punch with the twenty five knockouts in the twenty nine wins. Uh, also on the card, a couple big heavyweight fights. Uh, Former uh, interim world title challenger uh, Jonathan Guidry, 19-1-2, takes on Jesus Escalera, 19-0-19 knockouts. Escalera uh, gets his big test. Uh, so nine, all 19 of those knockouts within the last, uh, I think, 12 or 13 months. So Guidry and Escalera it should be a, a, a slobber knocker if, if you like action uh, and big punching heavyweights. Also, former WBA world champion Trevor Bryan, who defeated uh, Jonathan Guidry takes on Cassius tw- uh, Cheney. Both guys are 22 and one with 15 knockouts. If that doesn't say 50 50 fight on paper, nothing will, but that's going to be a good fight. And the winner is going to be right back in the mix of things uh, to, to get a big opportunity. So Cheney and uh, Trevor Bryan, I'm looking forward to calling all the action 7 p.m. this Saturday night, live on fight.tv pay per view, donking.com pay per view. It's going to be, and uh, to steal a quote from uh, Don, it's going to be an extravaganza at the Casino Miami this Saturday night. A couple news items this week. So, uh, a couple big fights were announced for December 9th in Pembroke Pines, Florida. The uh, Cuban WBO featherweight champion Robesi Ramirez, 13-1, eight knockouts, puts his belt on the line against Mexican contender Rafael Espinosa, 21-0, 18 knockouts. Also in the 10-round co-feature, Zander Zaya, 17-0, 11 knockout squares off with Jorge Fortea, 24-3-1-9 knockouts. WBA Bantamweight champion Takuma Inouye suffered a rib fracture and uh, will uh, will not be able to make his first title defense against ex-champion uh, German Ancajas, scheduled for November 15th. The whole card, uh, which includes a WBA flyweight championship between Artem Del- Delakian and Japanese challenger Seijo Yuri Aku, has also been canceled. No rescheduled date as of yet. Undisputed female featherweight champion Amanda Serrano uh, this past uh, this past uh, this Friday night scored a historic 12-round amateur decision uh, over WBO interim champion Danila uh, uh, Ramos. Serrano now 48-2-1, Ramos 12-3 uh, with one knockout. That was the first uh, female bout that was scheduled for 12 rounds and three minutes in every round. Fans love that they packed the Caribe Royale. Scores are 120-108 on all cards for the real deal, Amanda Serrano. Uh, Jonathan Gonzalez had to withdraw from his uh, fight. Uh, we mentioned uh, about Rene Santiago taking on Kevin Vivas. That fight was supposed to be happening uh, uh, with uh, Santiago and Jonathan Gonzalez. Gonzalez had to withdraw. He, uh, he got, I believe he got ill like maybe a day or so before the fight. So in stepped in uh, Santiago against Vivas. Santiago uh, scored the 12th round stoppage on the body punch, as we mentioned early. And finally, Nio Inoue and Marlon Tapalos have a date now for the undisputed uh, Super Bantamweight Championship. It will take place December 22nd at the Ariaki Arena in Tokyo. Uh, we expect to be a huge crowd. That will be for the undisputed championship uh, in a way, he's attempted to become an undisputed champion in two weight divisions within one year, which is uh, unbelievable. So, in a way, uh, you know, everyone's mentioned in a way, Usyk and uh, Terrence Crawford in no particular order as the three best fighters of the year. Uh, tune in to Abrams Boxing on YouTube this week as uh, I'll be getting more interviews from uh, this big event in, in uh, Miami, Florida. Don King, the WBC Cruiserweight Championship. Don't forget, this Saturday Night Live on Fight.TV, pay-per-view, donking.com, pay-per-view. There are a lot of fighters will be in town. It's in Miami. See some stars get out. I'll be getting all the action, calling all the action with Carl King and Christy Martin. Should be an excellent broadcast. A lot of fighters may make a cameo on the broadcast for interviews interviews and whatnot. So uh, be, be there uh, to help sell, uh, help celebrate Don King's 92nd uh, birthday. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us this week. Uh, again, uh, thanks for uh, uh, Noel McCallion for joining us. And we'll talk to you next week. Uh, 
probably back in the home office. I'll be in Nashville on Tuesday night for another edition of Country Box Live on Fight.tv for free. So there's a lot of action. You want to, I'll be behind the mic calling all kinds of fights uh, and have all kinds of interviews. So I'll talk to everyone next week, and we'll see you at the fights.